Right, it's time for our Great British Debate this hour, and I'm asking, would you object to wearing a face mask? Now, the UK Health Secretary Agency has given the following advice due to the high numbers of flu and COVID cases. Adults should try to stay home when unwell, and if they do have to go out, wear a face covering. When unwell, don't visit healthcare uh, settings or visit vulnerable people unless urgent. Now, that's as a report, Secretary, <coughs> as Transport Secretary Mark Harper also echoed a similar sentiment. And it comes amid a rise in the number of COVID cases, with a pre predicted 3 million people having tested positive for the virus over the festive period. Now, at this point, you have more chance of catching COVID than you do a train. But critics are up in arms over the advice, with many saying masks are symbolic of lockdown, a time people are keen to forget, whilst others believe it is a small gesture that will prevent the NHS from becoming overstretched this winter. So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, would you object to wearing a face mask? Joining me now in the studio is Professor, a professor in medical microbiology at the University of East Anglia and Great Barrington, Declaration Code Signatory, Dr David Livermore. There's so much there about you, Doctor. Hi. So, first of all, uh, David, so talk to me about this then. Face masks, face coverings. Um, there's lots of research that, that actually suggests that they do work in, in some settings, surely? Very little. I mean, the accepted wisdom before the pandemic, so going back to 2019, was mm. for multiple trials in influenza, was mm. that they made no difference. There have been two trials done during the pandemic, the Dan Mask study, which showed no benefit, and one in Bangladesh, which appeared to show a slight benefit from wearing face masks in terms of reduced COVID infection, mm -hmm. but was very strongly criticised uh, statistically. And actually, the, num the, the, the absolute number of people who got infected in the two arms was, was difference was trivial. Mm -hmm. So min minimal benefit. You get people who say that the N95 masks are better. However, in Bavaria, where they were mandated, fared no better than the rest of Germany. And you can look at jurisdiction after jurisdiction where face masks were mandated and yet the incidence of but, COVID shot upwards. So but, but could minimal it, could it, could, it, could it be more to do with the fact that the way people are using the masks and not the fact that they're ineffective? Because obviously, if you go to a healthcare setting and somebody's operating or something like that, they will wear a mask. Now, you wear the mask, you wouldn't want somebody operating on you without masks. So if you're saying they're not working then why do, why do doctors well, wear them? And, and The, the use in surgery is really quite different. It's to protect the doctor against blood spatter mm. and it's to protect against large drops of, of, of saliva or large drops or, or droplets falling onto the patient. Whereas what you have as you breathe outwards, if mm. you've got a, a viral respiratory infection, COVID or influenza, is you've got much, much finer water particles or coming out loaded with virus, which will pass straight through an ordinary surgical mask. I mean, the pore size on them is, is uh, 80, 100 uh, microns. The size of uh, a, a COVID virus is about a hundredth of that. It's like firing marbles at a, at a chain link fence. What, 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 will go what, what, OK, well, there was a study, uh, one of the most comprehensive studies on mask effectiveness, and that was published in December 2021. And it demonstrated wearing masks does reduce COVID transmission. So this one was researchers from this, the American universities and health organisations. They recruited 340,000 adults in 600 villages in Bangladesh. Now, this is the one that you said was That's the that one I just mentioned to but you. But it said the trial resulted in a 30% increase in mask wearing and demonstrated a 9% reduction in COVID-19. Well, what happened? That's 9%. That's something. Then, well, one, it didn't reduce by, by 9%, because if you go back to the raw numbers, the 300,000 people, you had masked villages and mm -hmm. unmasked villages. And in the masked villages, if I remember, there's 1,080 infections mm. recorded. In the unmasked, it's 1,106. Or something. It's a tiny, trivial... And you go to a paper by uh, Chikani, is it? Chikani, Chikani, something mm. like that. It's in trials. You'd easily find the paper really taking the st statistics apart on that paper. Mm. It is not a well-designed trial. Well, listen, stay right there, David, because I'm going to bring in um, Dr. Barrett Pankani. He's a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter. Uh, Barrett, thank you so much for joining me. Now, David said that the masks aren't particularly effective. Uh, what's, what's your view on this? Well, look, there's other evidence that also indicates its usefulness. What I want to say is this. Nothing is 100 uh, percent effective, not even the vaccines. What we have to do is we take a multi-layered approach. One is the prevention approach, which is 
avoid the three C's, the crowded places, the closed environment, the closed places with poor ventilation, and sitting close to other people, especially when you may have a infectious disease. And then on top of that, in an environment where you may be spreading your droplets, and your droplets, if they are captured in a properly fitting, well-made mask, you are reducing the number of droplets. The key word is reducing the number of droplets. And when you reduce the number of droplets, you reduce the chances of them being airborne and going into somebody else's airways. So this is empirical stuff, empirical common sense, which says, whilst I cannot prevent it, I can reduce it. And that reduction is a good thing, especially when you've got so many other viral infections going on simultaneously, as well as SARS. Barrett, Barrett, what would you say, though, about David's point that the particles that uh, come through with uh, COVID are tiny, so the mask won't really stop them anyway, even if you have got this layering effect that you're speaking of? OK, I, I'm very happy to address this. And I, I, I do advocate that, number one, you wear a, a good good quality, good, good quality mask, a bit like the um, N95s here, much better. And secondly, um, these are three plies. So, of course, you're not going to stop all the droplets. But to say to me that none of the droplets are captured by the mask is not also being very truthful. So none of the masks will stop everything. But my point is, it reduces the number of escaping droplets. And that is all we've got with, we've got to play with. You're reducing the number of droplets that are going to be released from your voice, from your nose, being airborne, and then finding somebody else's airways. Well, David, if you respond you're to that, not, because... You're, you're never hermetically to that. Sealed. It's not possible to be hermetically sealed. All you are doing is capturing as much as you can, and the better the mask that you wear, the better the way you wear your mask, you reduce the number of droplets that you are releasing. I'm sure you reduce the number of large droplets, but they're not the point. The virus is aerosolized on tiny particles of, of moisture, of, of water those coming out. Those, those, equally... those go, go straight through the mask. Uh, you say no, that N95 agree. masks are better, and in laboratory studies with Taylor's dummies, indeed they are. But look at, at Swiss Policy Research's website, which is a pretty unbiased website, and they've got the data up for Bavaria, where N95s were mandated, versus the rest of Germany, where people were mostly using surgical masks. And no difference in the incidence of COVID across the regions. Let, let Not Barrett, now to China. Let, let Barrett respond. Barrett. So, so, look, we have not said that a mask or masks is the only solution. What we are saying is it's one part of a longer armamentum in the, in the reduction, in the reduction of spread of infections. Um, we will, people will keep on quoting study after study, and I will say to you, well, have a look at the papers published in Nature. They are emphatic enough to say that they have a role in reducing not preventing, but reducing the spread of infection. Now, as a infectious disease doctor, I always say, look, we can do multiple layers of prevention. And the multiple layers are those three C's I mentioned, plus vaccines, plus avoidance, plus wearing a mask, but wearing it properly, plus wearing uh, a higher quality mask. I do appreciate that in the UK and places like that, um, people are resistant and reluctant to wear masks. And there, we need to have a conversation about, will it work? What would you do in certain places? Um, should you compulsorily wear it or should you just wear it where the, there are crowds? Those are conversations we should have. And I know there's a lot of reluctance to wear it. David, David, David I, very briefly to you then, because what about the layering effect? Barrett's talking about a layering effect. He's not just saying the mask on their own. There's, there's good arguments for that layering approach for preventing hospital-acquired infection. But it's quite different in the community because we live in an equilibrium with all sorts of respiratory viruses. You get infected a lot of times as childhood, you build up some immunity, and afterwards you go through life, you get a mild infection, often asymptomatic, you make an immune response, and your immunity goes up and down. 
You try to prevent that in the community. All that's going to happen is that when you do pick up an infection, it's going to be worse. So instead of getting a little bit of infection like that and goes as a wave, you get occasional bigger and worse infection because your immunity is drained. It's better to get back to that immune equilibrium with respiratory syncytial virus, with influenza, and to establish de novo such an equilibrium with SARS-CoV-2. And then we can go back to living as we always previously did. Final word about, about you've got about 20 seconds, your final thoughts on this. Well, prevention is always good. My advice would be do all you can not to get infected. Be immunised, look after yourself, if the vaccines work, and don't get repeatedly infected. If you wish to use the multiple layers of looking after yourself and your family, please do so. Well, listen, Barrett, thank you very much for joining us. That's Sir Barrett Pankania. He's a senior uh, clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter and also David Livermore.